Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Eric. Uh, just a little programming note before this episode begins. By the way, 12.23 a.m. on Monday, February 8th, that is turkey time, and I am in Torba, Bodrum, Turkey, uh, although you are listening to the American in Berlin podcast. Um, so this week's episode, I recorded with Jeff and Alex from the uh, Americans in Germany Drinking Whiskey podcast which is like an advice podcast about people looking to move to Germany with an American perspective. Sounds similar to mine, but theirs is much more structured and topic-based and probably practical in that sense. So if you want that kind of um, straightforward how-to tips and advice show, that is the show for you. If you want a show talking about why German men sit when they pee and uh, you know, getting diarrhea and going to the pharmacy and having to explain in your worst German that you need pills for that, then this is the show for you. <laughs> but we had really bad, um, I had really bad, I'm, it had nothing to do with them. In Turkey, the internet fucking sucks. It just does. All the places I've been, including hotels, and we had really bad connectivity issues. So Normally, when I have a guest on, I try to just make it pretty raw, very casual, normal conversation, and that means largely unedited. However, there was just no way that we could use all of the audio we recorded because there were so many instances of internet issues, um, lags, delays, having to repeat questions, me straight up getting booted out of the Zoom room because my internet cut out. So... I heavily edited this episode. There are parts, you know, if you can kind of tell if you're looking for it. Um, but it, it did kind of truncate the conversation. And there are times where it seems very stilted or awkward. And part of that's because the editing. Part of that's just because of that's how the conversation went because of the, the lag with the Internet. So I do apologize for that. Um, but by and large, I think it was a good conversation we had. Be sure to check out their podcast, uh, Americans in Germany drinking whiskey. And um, on that note, like I have been considering a rebrand. There is something kind of funny about calling this an American in Berlin and it just being like a personal blog of my life. But the reality is it's looking like next semester for school will also be remote. And then I might be doing an Erasmus the year after that, meaning uh, an exchange program not in Germany. So I it's unclear how much time I'm actually going to be spending in Germany in the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm not giving up on Germany. Uh, I'm not giving up on Berlin. That's like where I want to be. Um, uh, what's the thing that the sun does <laughs> that the earth does around the rotates? But like, isn't there a scientific word for that? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There is, right? What's the fucking star of the word that you learn when you're in third grade? Um, well, anyway, uh, I want Germany to be that for me. I want to be the earth, you know, or like a rogue a rogue piece of stardust. And I want Germany to be my son. Um, and yeah, I, I, but that's not unclear how much time I'm going to get to spend there. And with COVID, it's made it hard booking guests. I do prefer to do things in person if possible. Um, and just me being on the ground, meeting people, getting inspired for ideas of topics and so forth, it's just really hard to do. So I'm contemplating making this more uh, of an open-ended show where, depending on where I am, like I would love to do an episode on Bodrum or Torba or Antalya or Istanbul or you know, Turkey, things that I've done and still have my perspective in terms of what I'm going through in life. And then also do like what we did last week um, when we had uh, Ariel Isaac Norman on, where we talk about gender and politics and comedy that has nothing to do with the geographic location that we're in. But my idea with starting the show was to be like hyper specific um, and then, you know, build an audience, and then grow outward. I, I can tell from the numbers that most of the listeners are indeed both in uh, either in Germany or in the United States. So that does align with the name of the show. Um but I, I know people like, look, literally no one's ever written in when I say this email, but, or if you want to hit me up on Instagram, um, at Eric Berry writes or an American in Berlin podcast at gmail.com. I really would want to know, um, like perspectives on opening up the format a bit, which would mean probably changing the name, changing the logo still ha and like actually making it more about like 
travel and I can do episodes on, you know, Cuba and Costa Rica and Ecuador and places I've already been to and try to get that kind of perspective in there. Um, as opposed to though having it be quite so like mechanical, I'll say in its effort to be about Berlin. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that was a cool idea I had, but just the logistics of it are not feasible at this point. Um, so I might, and for who knows the way the world's going to go, you know, might not be feasible for three, four, five years. So why belabor the point and uh, perhaps pivot now? That's just what I'm thinking. I don't know, but I would genuinely love your thoughts on that. Um, again, at Eric Berry writes or an American Berlin podcast at gmail.com. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, let's get on with this show again. Um, apologize. It's like a little bit wackier than the normal. And I'm interviewing two people, which is hard, right? Like they have a rapport with each other. They know each other. We've literally never met in real life. Um, so there's just a lot going into it, but uh, I think it's still a good episode. All right. That's it. Thanks for listening. I'll talk with you next week. Don't know from where. Don't know with who. But uh, yeah, enjoy. Joy. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> uh Hello, everybody. Uh, this today, what is today? Today is Tuesday, February second at nine p.m. Turkey time. Uh, you're listening to an American in Berlin, the podcast. My name is Eric, and naturally, I am not in Berlin. Um, I am still in Antalya, Turkey. <laughs> I plan to be uh, moving tomorrow to a new destination um, on the coast, and. We'll sadly be missing out on Friday here where we're going to have 23 degrees Celsius weather. Um, so that's exciting. But what's even more exciting is that I have not just another guest on the show this week. I have two guests on the show this week. Uh, also uh, remotely. Um, and I'm very excited to have them on. They are the hosts of the Americans in Germany drinking whiskey podcast uh jeff and alex welcome to the show hey thanks for having us yeah it's good to be here it's uh it's uh i, I would say long time no see but yeah, we, we just interviewed you last week so <laughs> yeah yeah that was that was fun to do we've actually never even met in real life which is like i guess kind of the world we're living in now but uh yeah we're doing each other's shows and have never even actually uh shared whiskey together no, we haven't. We True. Have, we're we're yeah. having one right now, um, to, you know, to, to stay on brand, I guess. <laughs> but we've kind of gotten used to it. We, we have also a, a podcaster or a YouTuber in the States who we've had on our show a few times. And now we're kind of like friendly with her, but we've never met her. And yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of weird. But uh, here we are. Here we are. This is Corona. <laughs> I, so we can't actually see each other for anybody who may be watching this on YouTube uh, because of the fantastic Internet in Turkey. We've had some issues. So. Uh, so I can't even, I, I, if I remember from five minutes ago when I kind of had internet, are you guys drinking beers tonight or are you doing the whiskey thing? Well, we, we, we always have uh, a one of both. We have, we have the beer for, you know, just to, to keep things loose and we have the whiskey for the flavor. Right. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Or just alcoholics. The, I don't know what it is. The, the, we, we, we usually we have like, we, we start with one beer to get things rolling. And then as we start, as we start recording the podcast, then we switch to whiskey and then throughout we use the beer to kind of like. Yeah, wash things down. You know, little. We like we like both. Yeah, we are in Germany after all. Right. The beer's the dirt, the dinner, and the the whiskey's the dessert. Yes. You know? Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh. Well, so for for people, why don't you just describe, if you would, what exactly your your podcast is? Well, basically, it's a it's an expat podcast. So we, I mean, we're, we're we are like our name is the literal definition of what we are and what we do. We are two Americans. And we live in Berlin, Germany, have for many years. And our podcast, you know, each day, each uh, week, it's a different topic. We're talking about life in Germany, the differences between Germany and the U.S., uh, giving like tips and advice to people who would move abroad to Germany or to Europe in general. And during each episode, we test a new bottle of whiskey. Yeah. And so we are Americans in Germany drinking whiskey. That's so it. I think that's 
Is, do, did, I, did, I, did I leave anything out? I don't, I don't think I've done anything out. That's, okay. that. That's pretty much it. I mean, I talk a lot of bullshit, so. Yeah. <laughs> the, the whiskey portion was when you guys were coming up with the idea for this, were you like, okay, uh, I'm not sure if, if Americans being in Germany is enough of a hook. We got to have the whiskey part. Or was it you want to do a podcast about drinking whiskey and why don't we make it about Americans? And, like, was there a chicken and egg situation there? No, it, yeah, it was kind of like, so we had the idea of the podcast when we were just having, uh, we are at a beer garden and, um, and then we thought like, there's already so many expat podcasts out there and we're like, what can we do to kind of differentiate ourselves? And I was just like kind of a budding whiskey drinker at the time. So, um, I don't know who came up with the idea. It might've been, I mean, I was more of a whiskey drinker at the time, I yeah, guess. For sure. But yeah, we, we had the conversation where people were, or our girlfriends were trying to get us to do a podcast, but we said, there's just so many expat podcasts. Like what? Who's going to listen? Yeah. What, what would make us different? And then I don't know how it came up, but one, maybe either me or Alex said, you know what? We could test a different bottle of whiskey in each episode just to add that little extra thing. Plus it just... I think any time you do a podcast, like you as the podcaster want to have fun or else what's the point? And we both like whiskey. So it kind of, we thought that'll actually just make it more fun, you know? Right. But yeah. now, now the problem is we have like 50 bottles of whiskey in our apartments and we're running out of space. So you have 50 bottles. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have, we're now on uh we're recording episode 52 tomorrow. So uh yeah. yeah so we literally have, I, I think I've, I finished a few of the bottles. So maybe I have like 48 bottles of whiskey, <laughs> but but yeah, I, I yeah we we I just the other day had to move from what it, the shelving unit I was on to a new one because literally I could not cram another bottle in and my girlfriend was getting a little annoyed that I was taking up all the kitchen space. So okay, so every show is is a new bottle that you're you're testing out. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And we we try to get it from all around the world. So we've had like South African whiskey and Australian whiskey, uh, obviously Scotch, um, Irish, from German, German, Spanish. Yeah. Um, Everywhere, oh, everywhere. St stuff we would never have drank if we didn't do this podcast. It's really fun to learn, learn a lot. Uh, for anybody listening, I just got kicked out of the Zoom Hello? room because my internet <laughs> is so freaking bad here. I really apologize. This may be a challenging episode. Oh no, I here. think I think it died, um, and you can't check because. <laughs> Oh, yep. I'm, I gotta figure out how oh, this is gonna work. Shit. This is. Okay, now let's just record on. the next 10 minutes of it. Um, let's do it like this. Ay, ay, ay. It was gonna message you though, your phone's over there. Mm. Should I stop Technical recording? issues, man. I, I don't, like, that way like, each audio like, file will match with the video file. I guess so. Because I, or, it was nah, fine he, at first in this apartment. Let's now just keep going. It sucks. I, it actually, it'll make huge files. Show my wife wants to talk to you. And I think that that may be that I used up too much internet. Damn it. Hello? Oh man! Yeah, I just I've just been mono I've just been monologuing. You were, oh, you were monologuing. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I don't know. So, um, yeah, like, we made a comment, and then well, there was just dead air for two minutes, and we're like, we're like, oh man, he didn't like that joke. <laughs> uh, well, I was gonna I was I was gonna say you know if you can't get the whiskey sponsor so. at least. Oh, no. uh, it, it, oh shit! Oh Jesus Christ! It was doing. It was doing okay for. It was all right. Oh God! Months. Yeah. Oh. Um. Are, are, is am I just not coming through at all for you guys? <laughs> this is gonna be great. Whatever I'm drinking, I'm happy. He's like, I want to do less, least edits as possible, and it's gonna be a lot of editing. If, if this whole if this thing even works. Okay. I yeah. I've just been recording for all this awesome behind the scenes content. Um, yes, good. We us too. We haven't yeah, stopped. So. We haven't stopped. We we thought about stopping, but then we really. <laughs> but then we remembered you said you want to do as little editing as possible. So I was like, okay, we'll keep it as one one audio file, one video file. So how did you? Let's just let's just plow through this and and uh, see what happens here. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Let's so. Do it. <laughs> how how did you guys end up meeting each other? You were already both in Germany. Is that correct? Yes, uh, Jeff was in Germany for I don't know, long time, longer than and me. Alex, but all, both of us, long time. I mean, yeah, I, at this point, he's been here for nine years. I've been here for seven years. We met two or three years ago, about about two years ago. Yeah, I mean, basically comes down to is um, I started dating my current girlfriend, and she she works at a kita, uh, you know, German kindergarten, and Alex is one of her colleagues. So one of the first times I met her friends, I went to like an after work 
beer sesh at the beer garden next to their work. And that's where I met Alex. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we were colleagues, colleagues, but also like very good friends as well. So we hung out um, fairly often and I just knew him as like her boyfriend. And then we got like pretty tight. And then uh, we actually didn't hang out super often until we started recording, like just him and I. And so that's kind of like we, we, we would hang out in groups. I think the first time we actually hung out, just the two of us, was recording our first episode. It's true. Probably true. Yeah. Wild. I know, I mean, a lot of people will talk about how difficult it is to meet people or make friends in Berlin, uh, pandemic aside. Had that been your experience uh, in terms of building out a social circle? <sighs> yeah. Um, it's definitely a stereotype because it's 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 a true stereotype. Um <sighs> Yeah, it's like a, tip, a typical big city, you know, where, uh, you know, you move over here hoping that you're like special and people want to hang out with you, but people see so many foreigners every day that they don't, they don't give a shit about you. And so yeah. it's like, you have to make all the effort, you know, people are not going to come to you and go, Oh, look at an American. So rare. It's like, no, you're not rare. You know, they, they see foreigners all the time. So. Exactly. And yeah, and, I mean, it took like, I think it definitely took me a year or two to really get a good um few friends that i can really trust and hang out with very often but uh, the f the first year it's definitely kind of like meeting a few people and just trying to hang out as much as possible and kind of like just kind of holding on to anyone you kind of can um but i think it's and if you move anywhere in the world you're going to have that experience um and also yeah germans are not as forward as americans are so it can be a lot more difficult to to meet people outside at a bar or like in a park or anything like that so you have to put in a real conscious effort, but not in like a stereotypical American way. Like if you go up to a German and be like, hi, I'm Alex, they're going to say, I, they're going to be like, what are you doing? Get out of here. Yeah. And I, so many Germans that, you know, because Americans are like very open, much quicker yeah. than Germans are. Yeah. But I've said so many times, especially back in the day where the Germans were put off by that, where, where I'd say something that to me was totally normal to say somebody I just met and they would look at me and be like, Oh, I can't see, believe you just said that, you know, like, yeah. uh, and they're, they're kind of put, they're kind of, or maybe not put off by it, but they're just, it's, they're not used to somebody giving like personal details about themselves on, you know, after just knowing somebody for two hours or, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I think once you finally do make a, uh, like a German friend, it takes a few months to kind of crack that shell. But like once that shell is cracked, like your friends for life, like they'll be there for anything and, you know, anytime. Um, but it, it it takes a while. You you got to chip away a bit um, at, at the relationships. Yeah, and and to to start, I mean, Berlin has so many foreigners. So you know, if you're finding it hard with Germans, you can meet people from Spain, from Portugal, from Russia, from wherever. Yeah, there's definitely a big um, expat community here. So it's, it's I think that's probably the best the best place to start. And then after a while, I think if you actually plan like live live, um, you'll start getting more German friends as well. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah H have you guys uh had any experience with a language barrier like do you feel like you're you're automatically a bit of an outsider yes. every day oh god um, yes every day. you know i don't know do do one of you kind of speaks german i yeah we we, we 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 both speak german um like i'm i'm pretty fluent um not native but like i can have conversations all day uh it's still not super crazy comfortable but you know you can do it um, I think, you, I think we'll always feel like an outsider no matter what, cause there's always those cultural differences and still a bit of a language barrier. Absolutely. But it is what it is. Yeah. And, and especially in the beginning, the first year or two, when your Germany, when your German is, you know, good enough to order at a restaurant or whatever. Um, I, I had so many times where I got invited to parties and you go to the party and it's of course, naturally 90% Germans or all Germans. And you're the one foreigner. And it's just a room of people speaking German and you feel very, and again, they have the right, it's Germany. So of course, you know, so I'm not, I would never ask anybody to speak English just because I'm there. But what happens is you start, you end up in the corner kind of by yourself, uh, really f just feeling disconnected, staring at the wall and having no idea, you know, you're trying to dump and jump in conversations. But when you, when you're only catching a few words here or there, it's almost impossible. Um, so yeah, I, I had a, plenty of times especially in the first year or so where yeah you just you feel really isolated and i completely understand why some people 
they move abroad and then they move back within a few months. I think it's because of that isolation. It's daunting. That, that, lon- that lonely feeling you get because mm-hmm. it's like you just want somebody to talk to and who will understand you and they'll, you'll understand them, and, you know. Um, and then there's always, there's always the situations where you are at, a, at that party and you finally do get to talk to somebody and you might, you know, you're talking to three or four people or whatever and they're all German or they all at least can speak German and they're all speaking English on your behalf. And then you kind of feel bad because you're like, I'm the only one that can't speak German and everyone is using their second or third language even to speak English to me. And that kind of feels, uh, I don't know. It's kind of of a weird feeling. It feels wrong. Like I I don't want to, I don't want to move to a different country just to have everyone else change for me. You know, it's like you move to Germany, you should change for them. Even though it's super nice of them. And like a lot of my German friends that I met in English, I still only speak English with because like, that is our language that we met each other in. So it's weird to switch halfway through, like it's weird to switch through the relationship. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Berlin is a odd place to try and learn German because you have the, the situation you just described, but then you also have this thing where you, at least I'll, I'll speak for myself, like where I will do my best to speak German. And I think I'm even saying everything correct, but given my accent and like maybe yeah. like the discomfort on my face with doing it, like, then they'll just revert to speaking English. And I'm like, no, no, I want to practice my German. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about this a few times uh, mm-hmm. and to this day. I mean, I'll, I'll speak to somebody in perfect German and they'll, and they understand every word I say, and then they'll switch back to English. And then after the conversation, I'll turn to my girlfriend and be like, what did I, did I say it wrong? What was it? She's like, no, you said it perfect. And, and it's, it's kind of, and I think the Germans think they're doing a favor, but they don't realize it really kills your confidence and it really, it's kind of, um, uh, I don't know. It's kind of annoying because you're like, I'm really trying hard here, but you're not letting me try or, or you're making me feel like my German sucks. You know? Yeah. But yeah. But at the same time, it's also really nice of them to try to make you feel welcome and make you feel like you're a part of a community or, you know, make you not feel lonely. So I understand from their side, but from a learning, from a language learning point of view, it can be very frustrating because everyone's speaking English to you and you're trying to learn. Yeah. Yeah, it can be it can be also horrible where I've had times where I speak in German, they respond in English, I go back in German and it's a back and forth. I have stu- yeah. <laughs> I have I have stuck with German just to make the point. No, I want to do this in German. Exactly. And and, and I think in that case it's not nice. It's actually kind of rude of them because they see they can understand what I'm saying. They see I'm speaking in German, but they're not going along with it. And maybe maybe, 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 maybe it's rude of you not speaking this to them, Jeff. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> uh, but I, I have a friend of mine who um, he's from Israel and he's actually hundred ten percent fluent in German, and but they can still sense the the accent. Accent, yeah. And so we'll be out going to a movie theater or whatever, and he'll order tickets in German, and he, they'll switch to English, and in German he'll be like. Sorry, I don't. I don't speak English. I don't know what you're saying. You know, even though he can, he just. But he's just like. He's like, what, why are you speaking which into English? Like, I, I talk to you in German. What, what is this all about? You know, and he gets kind of uh, annoyed by it, and I kind of understand it though. For sure, but I think a lot of Germans also want to practice their English too, because that's really important to a lot of people. So, yeah, it's it's a weird uh, balance, I guess. Yeah. The the proficiency level though, uh, of, uh, the proficiency of Germans and particularly you know pe- Germans living in Berlin of English is incredible. I mean, like. They're, it's incredible. Oh yeah, almost everyone I encounter is fluent in English. Oh, for sure. Like anyone who comes here for a holiday or moving here, their first week will be super easy because you'll, you know, everyone speaks English, so you're not gonna have a problem getting around probably at all. Yeah, I mean, I'd say anybody under the age of forty, you're guaranteed. Over forty, it's a hit and miss. But the funny thing is, even though they're amazing at German, they the average German has like zero confidence in yeah. it. Yeah, and and will even be like, oh, I'm so sorry, my German's horrible, mm-hmm. and. I had that so many times uh, visiting my my um, my girlfriend's family and meeting some of the boyfriends of the family, and they'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry, my English is horrible." And I'm like, "I have understood everything you've said to a T. Your, your your English is perfect." And then they're like, "Oh, that's so nice of you to say." They're like, "No, no, I'm not being nice. Like you, you have perfect German. I don't know why you have no confidence." Yeah, always, always. I've never heard a German say, "I'm good at English," even yeah. though they're probably better than I am. Yeah, no, I same same thing. I'll I've also had it where I'll be, you know, I'll be like. Uh, hello, wie geht's dir? Ich bin Eric. Da, da, da. And then like four or five sentences in, I'll be like, yeah, Entschuldigung, mein Deutsch ist schlecht. And then the person will be like, ah, mein Deutsch ist schlecht auch. And I'm like, wait, are you not German? And they're like, no, are you not German? And I'm like, wait, we're both, <laughs> we're, we're both like non-native speakers struggling our way through, <laughs> Try, trying to be considerate of the other person by speaking German. <laughs> I've had that a few times for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, and Alex, I understand that. So you had never even been to Europe when you moved to Germany. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was there, did you undergo any kind of culture shock there? Uh, yeah, I mean, 100%. Um, I really didn't know anything. <laughs> this is really pathetic to say, but I didn't really know anything about Berlin or Germany except for like, would you learn history classes? Um, so it was definitely a bit of culture shock, especially, you know, I come from a small town from the smallest state in Rhode Island. So like even, you know, taking public transportation was a big culture shock for me. I guess if you came from New York or something like that, it wouldn't be. But for me, that was huge. And then also living in a, or being in a city with more than 200,000 people is also pretty incredible. But then of course, like, like Germany is just very different in the States for, for, for many reasons, um, which as we talk about for hours. So there was definitely a bit of a shock, but luckily I had a friend who lived here uh, that kind of helped me through it, understand what's kind of you know going on. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it was it was interesting. It was it was definitely uh, a bit of an overload in in all of the best ways. Like I, I was learning so much every hour of the day, and I still am. And I've been here for seven years, so um, it's 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 fun. It's definitely every day is fun. Well, not now. Now it's boring because of Corona, but usually every day is fun. <laughs> For both of you, were there any kind of crazy, like, you know, only in Berlin kind of moments uh, that that you encountered? Oh God, all the time. I mean, God, just, just ride the U- U-Bahn, you know, the subway in Berlin. You'll see some crazy shit that eventually becomes so mundane to you. Um, <laughs> you know, you'll see like a pony on the subway, or you'll see somebody, you know, two people walk on the subway with just a full desk or a couch or, you know, some guy with like assless leather chaps, just, you know, uh, but it's like, eventually it's, it becomes, I think that's one of the most beautiful things about Berlin is that you can dress and be any way you want to be. And really nobody cares. And no one cares about you. Not in a mean way, but just, um, in a perfect way, in a perfect way. Like you can do whatever you want and people, and people will look at you and just be like, yeah, it's Berlin. Yeah. You know, like whatever stuff that would like make an old woman pass out in uh, a small village or, you know what I mean? That she she saw it. (laughs) But in Berlin, it's, it's just so common and I'm talking to nobody. Well, I've been disconnected again, (laughs) if you're wondering. So uh, I am definitely going to have to edit this episode, which is fine. Um, And uh, make like a little pastiche of the questions and answers. Oh, yeah. This will be the exact opposite of my intended goal of not having to edit at all. But that's okay. I'll make <laughs> I'll make a cool little... Um... Yeah. This yes. is going to be so much editing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're going to have a lot of bloopers sh- in this one. A buttload of bloopers. Sure, sure, sure. Um, uh, uh, ball sack. Jeff, as uh, he was about where, to start, where do you, the oh, internet Lord. died. I cut out again. The timer. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was just gonna ask, like Jeff, um, yeah. you're, from, you're from you're from the Santa Cruz Mountains, is that is that correct? That's correct. Now, I, I mean, because you're from the Bay Area too, but I don't know if you know what's uh, Scotts Valley, the the city Scotts Valley. It's um like you, you you have to drive through it to get to. It's like it's the it's the exit just before you get to Santa Cruz. So it, it basically it is uh, Santa Cruz. But yeah, so I. I uh, spent most of my childhood in Scotts Valley. And of course, once I got a car, I was spending all my time in, in Santa Cruz because it's literally right there. So, uh, yeah. So spent my time in the Redwoods next to the beach. Not too bad. Which is like kind of its own brand of uh, like weird kind of hippie culture out there, right? Like it's almost the opposite of Berlin, which is like dark and gritty and industrial. And like there, like you have people watching sunrises playing with, like hula hooping on mushrooms. Yeah. I mean, totally. I mean, you're right. Actually, maybe living in Santa Cruz pre- prepared me for Berlin because yeah. In Santa Cruz, God, on the boardwalk, whenever you saw such weird people that just like same, like in Berlin, they, they it just wasn't weird anymore. It just became normal. There, there was a guy who downtown can't remember his name, but I think we just called him pink umbrella man. And it was this guy who dressed all in this kind of like pink fur and he had a pink umbrella and he would just walk super slow up and down the downtown street and he became famous this guy uh nobody really knew his story or anything and uh, but yeah but it was like stuff like that you just got you got used to it so by the time i came to berlin i was uh nothing really phased me you know i was i was ready to go 
Have you noticed, uh, I, I feel like there is this cultural difference, and I see it with uh, the Bay Area and New York as well, but comparing, let's say, the Bay Area to Berlin, where, yeah, there is this culture of kind of uh, like weirdness and alternativeness, but my sense, at least, in the Bay Area was it was kind of like, come one, come all, be your own brand of weird, like lots of color and stuff like that, whereas there is a bit of like, are you the right kind of cool in Berlin and very like wearing all black, that kind of thing that is similar to me mm. to New York in terms of that type of weirdness, if that makes sense. Actually. Yeah. I never really, I never really thought about that, but yeah, if, if you're going to co compare the like California Bay area and Berlin directly, I think you're actually right. Uh, Bay area is maybe more forgiving. Like, like really let your freak flag fly. Nobody, you know, you do you, nobody really cares. Whereas, yeah, in Berlin, it's also like that in certain areas, but you're right. Yeah. There is there is kind of a certain way people expect you to be. Uh, just like, like, I feel like sometimes when I tell people I live in Prince Lauerberg, they say, oh, you're like, I'm not a proper Berliner because... It's a yuppie. Or, yeah, <laughs> which I don't like, you know? So, so like, th there are these... Yeah, they're, they're maybe not as open in Berlin in that well, sense because because you're expected to act, yeah, dressed all black, uh, live in Kreuzberg, whatever, like do it, live and act a certain way in order to be Berliner. And but if you live in a certain area or do a certain thing, then you're just you're just gentrification and you're just not not but good the, for Berlin. The, the thing about that though is I feel like a lot of people who kind of have these stereotypes of like you know you got to wear black, you live in Kreuzberg aren't are usually people who aren't actually from Berlin or have been to Berlin in Berlin for a very long time. Like there is a thing, of course, like the wearing the black is definitely a thing in Berlin. Um, but I think like <clears throat> it kind of depends where, what kind of bubbles you're in, you know, because like Berlin kind of has a scene, so to speak for everybody, you know, there's like a big punk scene. There's a True, hip hop yeah. scene. There's a big hippie culture. Um, there's a skating scene, you a know, hipster culture, hipster yeah. culture, yeah. Uh, anything art, a huge art culture, uh, huge art scene here. There's kind of something for everybody. So I feel like the people who kind of stereotype that kind of like you have to be this one brand in Berlin have not been in Berlin long enough to see a lot of the different things that it has to offer because I hear that a lot and I don't necessarily agree with it. Yeah. But I but I understand where it comes from. I totally get it. Yeah. And in the broader spectrum, in, in some people, some Berliners' eyes, me and Alex just being foreigners living here, we are the problem. We right. are we are the reason that rents are going up and just us being expats moving here, we're screwing the whole the whole situation up. So it yeah, it really depends on uh, you know, what color glass you're looking at, looking through. Uh but, and, and everyone I met everyone I met actually who was from Berlin, I've never heard have any of these we kind of stereotypes of, you know, you have to be like this, this or this. It's mostly from people who, you know, who Get, get I don't know I don't know how to explain it I mean well, they okay. see it I don't know yeah, what the like, reason like, is like Berlin in a way it's I just thought of this is kind of like Disneyland so you go to Dis okay. go to Disneyland if you're you know a Star Wars guy you go to the the Star Wars section if you're mm. if you're the futuristic guy you go to the Tomorrowland if you're like you know whatever Berlin's like that because each district of Berlin is so different that no matter what you're into, what your personality is, how you dress, there is a, a an area for you to feel like completely at home. You know what I right. mean? So th that's why I don't like when people say this is Berlin because Berlin is so it's so much more. It's so eclectic and has so many different, uh, so diverse. You know what I mean? Like, like so if, if if you go to this park Hasenheide in the summer, you're not going to see everyone wearing black. You're going to see a bunch of hippies doing slacklining, smoking yeah. a bunch of weed, right. and you, know, you don't see anyone in black. Just a bunch of rainbow or, or whatever. You know? So like. That is definitely the gritty black, wear black, whatever stereotype, but um, I don't, that's not really what the city is, but it's a lot of it. <laughs> and after saying all that, um, me and actually, Alex are actually both wearing black, but that was true. That's, I mean, that's, I've always worn a lot of black. Anyways. That actually is just a coincidence. That is coincidence. <laughs> Berlin's the only place I've ever been where there's a dress code to get into a piss play party. Yeah, that's true. I mean, in terms of the club scene, there definitely is a dress code. Um, <laughs> but, but usually to a golden shower party, it's the dress code is like you're wearing too much. Like if you right. try to get in the Kit Kat Club, usually the problem is like you have too many clothes on. Like, dude, you're wearing a shirt. What I can't, I cannot see your nipples. Like, or if you're trying to go to any club and you're wearing khakis, you're you're not getting in wearing khakis. Yeah, but, a, or like know, a polo shirt. That's, that's not of, happening. That's kind of fair enough, though. When I got uh, when I was visiting Berlin a couple of years ago, um, I I definitely got rejected from Berghain. Um, but I so my 
my yeah my backup was so I, I went to <laughs> it's a rite of like getting rejected is a rite of passage <laughs> I feel like um it yeah. absolutely is it, it, it's happened to me but too so <laughs> I too. I went to Kit Kat Club and I actually got in like three or four times over the course of a week and I rem I remember nice. the Airbnb host I was staying with. He told me straight up, he's like, either go with women or act super gay. Like that was his advice that he gave me. And I went there, <laughs> and like there was these two like British like chav kind of <laughs> bro dudes ahead of me, and they were getting rejected. And the woman was like, No, you're not coming in. And then I was there by myself, and she was like more amenable to me and I totally was kind of being like, eh, a little flamboyant. And they tried to like hitch their wagon to me to get in. I was like, I know, I don't know these guys. I'm not with them. And the, <laughs> but even though I had like, I had on like a mesh mesh, just, like I, it was too much color. I had on like, like glow in the dark face paint and like blue mesh shirt and all this kind of stuff. And they literally like made me, Oh yeah, that's a yeah. Lot. They made yeah. me take my. They had to take my shirt off to come in the door, and I felt so odd. But uh, ultimately, I mean, I'm glad I got in. Um, but you, yeah. you, you didn't go in the pool, did you? I can't. If I did go in the pool, I it was like the end of my last night, and I was super hammered. But I don't think I went in. I think I like sat at the side of the pool. Okay. It's, you, you just get the booster shot afterwards. You're fine. Just get the booster shot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah. Well, yeah. now Kit Kat Club well, for, is giving for, Corona tests. Or, uh, or uh, yeah, that's vaccines. the funniest part. <laughs> I do think it's like pretty good branding in terms of like, yes, we are a sex dance club, but also we put a high priority on testing and and doing things responsibly. Yeah, for sure. That, that that's the Berlin way for Corona. But do they actually put a high priority on safety normally? No. I mean, pia sterile. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> Good news, you don't have corona. Bad news, you have syphilis. Right, yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, you guys had mentioned before, you know, corona times. I mean, uh, and, and we've talked about, like, just how brutal a Berlin winter can be. I mean, how are you guys staying sane? What are you doing to, to pass the time? Well, I'm, I'm lucky enough where I work in a kindergarten, so I get to go to work um, every day. So I get to hang out with less kids than usual. But so I'm, I'm going to work every day and then like on the weekends, it's kind of a lot of uh, some walks and then um, Zoom with friends while playing like these 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 games with each other. Um, yeah, we do the Jackbox games. The Jackbox games, yeah. We text everybody like, hey, let's have a game night. And then you do we do a, like an online game night. Uh, yeah, through Zoom. And, and and the thing is, I guess like after a while, you kind of get used to the, to the Berlin winter anyways. But at least then there's bars to go to or like think movie theaters and things to do. But um, but those things don't save you. I still no. get I still get that I get depressed every winter, even when yeah. there's no Corona. Um, it's rough. I mean, like I work from home, so I just I can go weeks without seeing anybody other than my girlfriend. So it's it's pretty depressing. So yeah, like I I, I like going for walks, just getting myself outside. Um, yeah, there's just like I'd love to give a list of things that people could do, but there's just nothing to do really. I mean, everything's closed. There's just really like, it's, it's a lot of, Oh, I, I, what we started doing is like things that we used to be able to do outside. We do inside. So like I, I, something I would never buy. I bought this like Xbox connect thing, which allows you to like play games, like using your body. It has like a sensor. <laughs> and so we, we bought like, uh, like workout games and games that like got you moving and like, and you can do like bowling inside, you know, like stuff like that. Just like, okay, we can't go, go go out and go bowling. We can't go out and go for uh, and go to the gym. But like, let's so let's try and figure out ways to do it inside. You know what I mean? So we've done a lot of that. Like, how can we? That was smart. How can we like bring the fun inside rather than just sitting and watching Netflix all the time? You know? Yeah, a lot of waiting until spring, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, for for me, I mean, and I, you know, I'm not. I I extricated myself <laughs> from Berlin, but like, yeah. I think with Corona, it was just, it, I mean, yes, it's dark. Yes, it's cold. But like, at least in normal times, if you will, you can kind of, you can break up that day where, okay, yeah, um, I'm going to go yeah. right in a coffee shop or cafe. And then at 8 p.m., I'm going to see a music show or stand-up comedy show or whatever. There was just like yeah things like that. Whereas uh, particularly, I mean, I think that winter solstice, I think it was like 3.51 p.m. was the sunset or something. Mm-hmm. And yeah. at that point, because of the cold and because you can't go, like, you're like, okay, my, my day is over. So like the rest of, until I, until I 
go to sleep, like the rest of my day will be spent in my bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. It's rough. And it affects your body. I mean, it gets dark so early by like 6 PM. You feel like it's 11. You feel you're just tired. You're sluggish. You don't want to mm-hmm. do, you don't want to do anything. And, and you get, you, and you get no vitamin D during a day either. Cause there's 99% of the time, zero sun. Um, so you're not getting any of that energy. And at least, you know, in, in the winter, um, Berlin, yeah, I mean, the weather sucks, but at least Berlin is generally like a giant playground of things to do. So the winters, you know, you, you survive them. You can have, I've had some lot of, lot of fun winters actually. Um, obviously summer here is amazing, but so at least there's a lot to do usually, but yeah, like you said, right now it, it, it is, it, it, it does suck. Um, we're, we're just wait, we're hoping numbers right now are going down. So we're hoping that hope movie by March or probably more April or May, we'll have like at least be able to meet outside in parks with like 10 people. That's my hope at least. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't even want to say hope anymore. Cause I don't know. I, I don't want to like, I don't want to be disappointed. So we'll oh, see what man. happens. I mean, I, I, my, I feel like they're just going to have to find, I mean, for people's sanity, they're just going to accept like riding this quote unquote tolerable level of infection where, I mean, it, it, I feel like this year is going to be exactly like last year where numbers will improve over the summer and then things will get cold again. And come October, they're just going to spike back up. Mm. I mean, and, I guess it all depends on the vaccine, too. So at least there's that other factor to it, which will hopefully help. Um, yeah. The problem was like people over the summer, like our, our numbers in Germany got so epically low. And then, yeah. and then everyone's hanging out, hanging out outdoors, which is pretty safe compared to hanging out indoors, you know, cause you have, you know, you have like open air and wind and stuff, but then, and, and everybody got really relaxed about Corona. But yeah, then when fall came, mm-hmm. everybody started moving back indoors with not remembering, okay, I have to option, I have to keep my social distance, but they just, they just moved indoors, cramming the, like themselves with everybody in these small bars and whatever. And yeah. And people were just, they're like, no, we're not like, I'm over Corona. I don't care if it's still here. And then, then right. and of course it spiked beyond, it went from 200 to 30,000 a day, which is, that's. Yeah. And then they had this lockdown light, which didn't really do anything. And then things are open again for Christmas, <clears throat> excuse me. And so then after in January, things really spiked, but now they're on like a hardcore lockdown and it seems that uh, it's working um, every, every day. It's lower and lower and lower. So let's hope that trend continues because I'm really over it. And people are getting healthier, which is also good. <laughs> yeah, it's a plus. Yeah. In your in your years here, is there are there any particular things, be it like culturally or food or what have you, that you're like, man, I just miss this so much about the states being in Berlin? Seafood, seafood, hundred percent. Yeah, proper seafood. I mean, in Berlin, you get a lot of old frozen stuff and like really bad selection. I, I there, also, there are I, some fresh things you can get, but it's not. Yeah. It's not the same. I mean, he's he's from the West Coast. I'm from the East Coast, so, so different stuff, yeah. different styles of seafood. But like, I would just kill to have you know some some a, a clam roll or a lobster roll or just any kind of shellfish, fresh shrimp or something. Oh god! And, and Eric, like you're you're from Bay Area, so the thing I miss is proper Mexican food. Which I mean, there's maybe one or two places in Berlin you can get like a proper proper Mexican food or a proper burrito. Like I, I miss having that on every street corner back in Santa Cruz, having just amazing Mexican food. And, um, so food, what, what else did you ask? Just uh, like things that you're homesick for. I mean, also family, of course. Um, it, 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 it that's something I think we'll never get. I'll, I'll never get used to is like not being able just to, you know, see my frat parents on, you know, the weekend or, or whenever I want. Um, I, at this point I haven't been home in over two years. So definitely seeing family is, is definitely the, the most difficult part about living away. And it's kind of that balance of like, is, is living away. I, I guess nothing is worth not seeing your family. Yeah, I was but, say, I can, I, yeah, nothing's worth not seeing your family, but like it, it, it is a life that I'm building here, better quality than a life I'm going to be building there. And for me, it is, I, I, I can build a much better life here in Berlin than I can, than I believe I could in the States. Plus, you know, your values and all those other things that kind of play into effect in it. But yeah, yeah. F- family is one thing that, um, yeah, I, miss- I don't think no matter what you can, you can not, you, I can't get over that. Yeah. yeah I, I would love to have half an hour drive to see my mom or my dad or my sister. I don't think or like a three hour drive yeah, or <laughs> anything or, but also like I, I'd say culturally, um, the main thing I miss about the States is just, um, the general openness. Like every time I visit the States just for Christmas for two weeks and you have random people 
in line at, you know, Subway, just start talk, strike up, you know, because that, that kind of stuff doesn't happen in Germany. Yeah, you know, true. Because it's, it's the like socially things are very different. Um, so I, I do miss that. I do miss the the kind of just like just overwhelming friendliness and openness and like the, the ease of striking up conversations with people. Well, even, um, even just knowing that everybody around you speaks your native language, too. Yeah, it's a nice it's a nice break for those like two weeks. To yeah. where your brain, yeah. your brain doesn't have to try so hard anymore, and it really relaxes when I'm back home. Like yeah. I know, like everyone I talk to here is gonna speak English, but then at the same time, every time I'm in the states, I'm always struggling to come up with the English words. So I always have like German <laughs> kind of slipping in all the time, or like remembering to like tip somebody at a restaurant, or getting carded at a bar, or those are like weird things that you. I kind of used to hear that when I go to the states, it feels really bizarre to me. Yeah, yeah. and one last one, I, I absolutely miss actual customer service that they <laughs> in Germany the customer service is balls and in, it's not very good. in the US it's it's amazing and they really bend over backwards to help you and here it's like why are you calling me you know like go away for sure so, for sure um, and usually they charge for these customer service numbers which I don't understand so. and, and, and they still aren't helpful no so. I, I had I think I talked about it on this show but I had an experience that I, I by and large like everything was fine with the friendly factor for me in my time in Berlin but I had a thing where um, I was like deathly ill and I was like oh my god I have corona and I call I googled and I called the number for Neukölln the the healthcare center and yeah um, the woman answered she started speaking German and I said um, you know in uh können Sie Deutsch I mean sorry English <laughs> and uh, she was and she literally she was like yeah but we're in Berlin, and Berlin is a German city, and in Germany we oh speak German. And that's awful. I that's was awful. like, I understand. I'm sorry. I was just trying to get a Corona test, and she was like, Okay, well, uh, we're not here to help you because you want to go on vacation. And I was like, I don't want to travel. I I think I'm sick. I want to make sure I'm not, <laughs> I don't have Corona. <laughs> and she's like. Well, then you should Google and find the number to call. And I said, I did Google. This is the number. That you are. And she, and she, and she, and you she are was literally like, the number. Yeah. And she said, uh, thank you. Have a nice day and hung up on me. Oh, my God. And oh, man. I was like, I, I posted about it in that Americans in Berlin group. And like, I understand if some people were like, well, you're in Germany. You should speak German. It's like. Dude, we're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. I wasn't calling yeah. up to ask if whatever they had the spätzle on special special today. Like I was <laughs> I was like, "Hi, I'm trying not to get sick or kill anybody, you know, your grandmother with my yeah. body." And that that was the response. Oh my god. And the the other thing and it it did it came up in that someone's like well do you think if you were in New York and you called that and so I called the New York Corona number and there was literally eight <laughs> other languages that they gave it in and I was like wow well, yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah. Ger Germans are still a bit behind on on, on yeah on I that mean stuff I've been saying for years that like especially in Berlin there's certain services like 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 the main inter internet providers like O2 or whatever that they should have dedicated English speaking customer service people because I had so many times where your internet goes down, you call them and there are so many non-German speakers in Berlin and you call and they just shuffle you around. Oh no, I don't really speak uh, English. Uh, let me try this guy. And they, they transfer you to somebody else. And then eventually somebody just hangs up on you because they don't want to deal with you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I, it's pretty I, I, ridiculous. Like, I one time got two phone plans at once because I couldn't understand properly. So for a year, for a year I was paying for two different phone plans and two different numbers because I just didn't, properly understand i was trying to do it all in german yeah and, and i was I, trying to upgrade my plan i was and, and then i wound up just getting a brand new plan <laughs> wow yeah and, and i and i get the the response okay this is germany but like you you you'd been in germany two months can you expect me to be fluent in two months like i, I also had the thing where i think they're getting better now but that's I, not my problem but i was at the immigration office nine years ago when i first moved here getting my first visa and literally the visa i was getting was to go to a German language school. So my visa was to allow me to learn German. Yeah. The woman was upset that I did not know German and mm. she almost did not give me the visa. And I'm, and I'm, and I knew three words of German and she's only speaking to me in German. And I'm like, please, I'm sorry. I, and she's asking me the same question over and over again. I'm like, I'm sorry. You could say it 10 times. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> and I think it's ridiculous to exp 
like I, I get, okay, if the person lived here five, 10 years, they should be able to speak in German. But yeah. when they've just arrived, it's their first year or whatever, you can't not use this, okay, it's Germany excuse. You know, it's like, no, this is, I, I, I'm, I've moved here or maybe I'm just a tourist here for two weeks. What, I have to learn maybe, German? Maybe you know? you're a tourist and you want a Corona check, you know? Yeah, it's still, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I don't think that it's Germany, you have to learn German thing, flies when you've just moved here or you're a tourist or, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's not like, because I don't think it's because we're Americans so much as the fact that like, for for better or for worse, like English is the the universal language of the world right. that is, yeah. is usually taught as the is the first second language and sure uh, yeah. you know you could you could be whatever you could be from Croatia here and the idea is that you can probably speak English and that that's going to be how you're going to communicate with someone in Germany. Yeah, it, absolutely. I mean, and I've had, you know, friend friend groups where, where one person's from Spain, one person's from Greece, one person's from Russia, and then me from America. And of course, I don't speak Russian, they don't speak Greek, Greek whatever. So like the, you know, go between, you know, m like median language is English, you know what I mean? So you have a, you have like a group of people who most of them, English is not their native language, but they're all speaking it because that's the one language that everybody knows, you know what I mean? And, and so it really has nothing to do with being American or being British, you know? Um, like, you, like you said, it's the second language for, for a lot of Europeans. Um, before we, we go here, uh, just some uh, like pieces of advice that you would have for um, people who may be looking to move here or things that you wish you would have known prior to moving here? Yeah, I mean, I would say... Like do your research before you get here, you know, really like, cause like the, I moved to Germany twice. The first time very like haphazard, really not a lot of preparation, not really knowing what I was going to try to do or what kind of visa I was kind of going to try to get. So I'd say really before you move kind of like figure out like, what's your plan, you know, do some research, figure out what documentation you need, what's the process, because it's so much easier when you, when you know all that beforehand, then you arrive in Germany and you're just figuring out what you need and don't, you don't have any of this documentation. You don't, you're not, you're not prepared at all. So I, I would say, I wish somebody told me to, at least the first time I came to really be uh, more prepared when moving abroad, or at least like be ready for, for different kind of possibilities, outcomes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think preparing is, is of course really important because I didn't repair at all before I moved here, like not even a little bit. Um, but also I think it's important to be really flexible yeah. and, and willing to, I mean, if you're moving anyways, you're out of your comfort zone, but like really be willing to go out of that comfort zone and, and, and you'll see, see where it takes you because you never know what, what amazing things can happen, good or bad, but at least, um, it's going to be an experience. Um, and I also say, uh, I made the mistake of when I first arrived getting my own apartment, I yes. would really say for sure, get a vague, get a flat share, like live with someone else immediately give, extend your social circle that way. Yeah. So you have other people that you see. Cause I, when I first moved here, I moved to my own place and I'll tell you, it's one of the loneliest few months of my life really, because a, I, and at the time I hadn't, I had no school or no job. So I really had no reason to meet anybody and you're in a foreign country, which makes you feel apart from everyone anyways. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the, that's an advice I'd give to my past self, like really start with a flat share and from day one, really be throwing, you know, go, go to, um, meetup.com, go to meetups, like really, I mean, of course it's Corona now, but anyways, in normal times, yeah. uh, really put yourself out there and you know, it's hard cause like I'm not an ex extrovert either. So it's difficult, but like really push yourself or else you're going to be heading home so quick, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and I think this is gonna be difficult for a lot of, I think it was difficult for me as an American too, is remembering like that your country where you are from is not the norm for everywhere else. You know what I mean? Like things are different in other places. And what, after a while, when you say, Oh, you know, on the States we do this, it gets annoying. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, you know, without, you know, being mean, but like it's, it's fun to remind, to know that like you are from a place, but also be open understanding that where you are moving to is going to be different. And just because you grew up differently does not mean that your way is right or wrong. It's just different. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you have so many people who they, they come here and then they're looking at apartments and they're like, 
like, oh, the washing machine's in the bathroom. What's this craziness? And it's, it's like, oh, you know, you have to stop comparing things back to the States. Right. Like, this is the way they are here. Just kind of embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace the cool weirdness of it. Like, you know, you, yeah, yeah. you get used to it. And it's actually like some of the things you're like, oh, my God, that's actually better than it is back home. Like, oh, these grocery stores are so small. But it's like, yo, they, they, they got all the meat, all the cheese you want. It's fine. Yeah. You'll, you'll figure it out. They're, they're smaller, but there's more of them. So it's, it's true. instead of like a few like, you know, airport size supermarkets, <laughs> there's, you know, 20 small ones. It's just the way yeah. it is. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is just like, yeah, just being open and understanding is empathetic to everyone around you and the, and the people and the, and the city that you're in. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that that's all uh, really good advice. Uh, and one of the ways that people can prepare uh, is by listening to the Americans in Germany drinking whiskey podcast. That's Where, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I'm I'm a professional here. Uh, all right. <laughs> where where Good can plug. where can people? Thanks. Yeah. Where can uh, where can people find that and uh, like find you guys in the world or online? Uh, you can find us on Instagram. Yeah, we're at Americans in Germany dot podcast. Uh, we're on Facebook, and then we have our website agdwpodcast.com dot com with all of our links and everything there. Contact us. All of that is. Uh, is on our on our website portal, if you will. Really, if you just put our name into Google, things will come up, and you will click on those things. Click on them. Yeah, they're good things. Yeah, we work hard on it. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, you guys, I really appreciate you coming on and fighting through these uh, insane internet issues that I've been having. <laughs> That's um, been fun, man. Thanks. It's been fun. Yeah, it's yeah. been a good time. This will be yeah. This will be a good practice for me and in getting back into my my editing. Uh, skills to uh, make this work but it was fun again I appreciate it and uh, yeah thank you for the listeners uh, not positive where I'm going to be next week but um, yeah no matter where you are in the world until next week uh, be well and be loved <laughs>